Ya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhan Hari Jai Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhan Hari Yashura Nandana Braja Jana Randana Yashuranandana Bhattajana Randana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Mr. Pad Paramahansa Rudika Charja Ashtotar the Shishimat his Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskan Bibiti Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jaya Mishnupad Paramahansa Parajaka Acharya Ashtotar Tata Sri Srimad His Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Ananda Koti Vaishnabinda Ki Jai. Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Samaveda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay, page 654. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 22nd day of July 2020 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Chapter 17. The Divisions of Faith, text 21, different forms of charity. Yatu pratyupakartartam. No, I'm, let's try that again. Yatu pratyupakartam. Palamuddhishya punaha. Diyate chapadiklishtam. Tadanam Radha Sangsmitam Yatu Pratyupakaratam Palamuddhishya Vapunaha Diyate Chapadi Klishtam Tadanam Radha Sangsmitam Yatu Pratyupakaratam Palamuddhishya Vapunaha Diyate Chapadi Krishtam Taddhanam Radha Sangsmitam Now Pratyu, Pratyu Pakaratam You can Yattu Pratyu Pakaratam Palamundishya Vapunaha 
दीयते च परिकृष्टम for the sake of getting some return, palam, a result, udisha, desiring, va, or punaha, again, diete is given, cha also, pati klishtam, grudgingly, tat, that, dhanam, charity, rajasam, in the mode of passion, smitam, is understood to be. But charity performed with the expectation of some return, or with a desire for food of results, or in a grudging mood, is said to be charity in the mode of passion. Purport. Charity is sometimes performed for elevation to the heavenly uh, kingdom and sometimes with great trouble and with repentance afterwards. Why have I spent so much in this way? Charity is also sometimes given under some obligation at the request of a superior. These kinds of charity are said to be given in the mode of passion. There are many charitable foundations which offer their gifts to institutions where sense gratification goes on. Such charities are not recommended in the Vedic scripture. Only charity in the mode of goodness is recommended. Okay, let's review what that charity in the mode of goodness is. Previous verse. Charity given out of duty, without expectation of return, at the proper time and place, and to a worthy person is considered to be in the mode of goodness. Om jnana timarandasya jnana shalakaya Chakshu unmidatam mena tasmai shri gadave namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So we may not realize this right now, but these things that we're studying now in the 17th chapter, the divisions of faith, uh, everything is given in these three modes of uh, 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 charity and We've just studied uh, sacrifice and penance, or tapasya. Right? There was sacrifice in the mode of goodness, passion, ignorance. There was austerity in the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. You may remember the mode of goodness. We have the austerity of the mind and the uh, body and the voice and the words. And now we're studying charity. Now, so at the beginning of the next chapter... Krishna is going to make the point that at no point should these three be given up, because it should be in the mode of goodness. But these are like um, foundations for the, you know the Vedic culture is austerity and charity and uh, sacrifice, and there's there's kind of overlap. You know, if you give a, a big gift to something, I mean that's a big sacrifice. You, know, you could have spent it on something else. So, uh, but charity has to be given. Uh, at the right time and in the right mood. If charity is given grudgingly, that means that you really, there's some, uh, there's some uh, un- uh, external motive for giving it. It's not just for the sake of the benefit of the person. It's, be- it's because as we read Dumba, right? The, the, what we read about uh, penance in text 18, uh, to be seen as a charitable person. That's why I think there's a passage in the Bible. Have you studied the Bible at all? so much. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's something that the best charity is given anonymously, so no one even knows you gave it. You know, then there's no chance of uh, dumba, of being, of being prideful in there. But the most important thing is the, the, uh, the mood that you give it with and the, uh, the person and the uh, institution you give it to. The charity is best given. We have this hundi. Uh, practically, this movement lives on charity. People feeling Yes, I, want to, I, I can't practice full-time. I can only chant so many rounds and come to the temple. But I can give something for the uh, benefit or the spreading of Krishna consciousness. That's the best kind of charity. Okay, uh, that's 20, 21. Now, here we go with charity in the mode of ignorance. Text 22, we're at the bottom of page 654, Prabhu. Adesha yadanam. Apatrebhyas chadiyate Asatkutam abhagyatam Tattama samadaritam Ritam And charity performed at an impure place at an improper time to unworthy persons or without proper attention and respect is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Purport. Contributions for indulgence in intoxication and gambling are not encouraged here. 
That sort of contribution is in the mode of ignorance. Such charity is not beneficial. Rather, sinful persons are encouraged. Similarly, if a person gives charity to a suitable person, but without respect and without attention, that sort of charity is also said to be in the mode of darkness. Now, that's interesting. I mean, it's pretty clear why, you know, just to give somebody, uh, you know, poor guy on the street, and you feel, okay, here's five dollars, and uh, all he sees is a bottle of wine in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> that happens. <laughs> so what is, that's the charity in the mode of ignorance. So we, sh we should be careful. Uh, then here it says, and even if you give to the right uh, recipient, it should be done with full consciousness of intention. If a person gives charity to a suitable person, but without respect and without attention, that sort of charity is in the mode of darkness. So that's almost like this grudging charity, you know. So when we sing the, the uh, Guru Puja song, we sing, Shi Guru, Shi Guru, Charana Padma, Kevala Bhakati Sadma, Bandomi Sabadana Mate. Now the translation that we say is the old translation. This was done actually, the, I think before Prabhupada left us, you know, left us uh, or departed. And he had given permission to redo that songbook. And I know the devotee who did it, who, who gave more accurate translation. What I'm getting at is that what that says is, so you, you know, mostly it's accurate, but what we say, but there's an important problem with it. Shri Guru Chadana Padma, Kevala Bhakati Sadma. Now, before we go on, uh, the word Bhakati, well, why do they put that extra A in there? Isn't the Bhakti, you know, for the meter? The same thing holds. If we start to sing this song that we sang this morning, Yashamati Nandana, the last line says, Bhakati Vinoda Ashraya. That's what he wrote, Bhakati Vinod, to get that extra syllable in there. But somebody edited it, and then we get Bhakti Vinod. And I can see it's going to be a problem because <laughs> they're going to sing it that way. And it's really Bhakati Vinod. Sometimes that's done, especially even in the, in the Sanskrit, not just the Bengali. There's the word Sparsha, which means to touch. But sometimes for the media, you see Sparsha. Now they had the extra syllable in it. So, what I was getting at is that Bandho Mui, Savadana Mate. So we bow down, Savadana, uh, with great attention. Not that we, uh, I bow down with great awe and reverence. That's nice and that's true. But the real important point is that pay attention. And what do we pay attention to? The, the overall meaning of bowing down and the specific pranam mantras that we're saying, mostly to Prabhupada. We should understand the meaning and, and you know, put our faith and our heart in it. So uh, this one I don't think you've heard before, Alex, since you've only been here a few weeks. There's a specific significant significance to the word namaha. I don't know if you heard this before. Maybe about that. It's not mine. My body's not mine. Did you ever hear this one? There's, there's a book called the uh, Krishna Lila Stubba. This is a, a, a summary of Krishna's Vrindavan Lila written by uh, Sanatana Goswami, translated by my old dear friend Gopi Puranadana Prabhu many years ago. Now it's about 15 years ago. And so... Uh, at the beginning of the book, what it consists of is this summary of Krishna's Leela, and interspersed, every so often, he'll have uh, obeisances, namaha. I think it may be after each pastime or something like that. So at the beginning of the book, there's a nice little commentary there where Gopi Purana explains the, the deep significance of the word namaha and how you should, you know, the consciousness should have. So this is common in, in Sanskrit. Sometimes they'll take the word and... Uh, They'll, they'll derive a meaning from the way the syllables are arranged. So, not ma, in a maha, not mine. So, when you, and this is describing especially full dandabats, you know, the, the bowing down fully like this, all eight limbs touching the ground. And so, what does it mean? That this body is no longer mine. I'm dedicating to you, whether it's growing a tie or you're bowing down to the spiritual master, the superior person. It's a very, you know, significant, meaningful thing. to really understand that. So when we uh, bow to Srila Prabhupada, we do that several times a day, or sing this song, uh, which we're bowing down, you know, mentally, we should do it with, with the real understanding of what that means, you know, recognizing the superiority, and that, that please engage me in your service like that. So we should remember that. So the point is, with great attention. Without great attention, even this charity may be given to the right person, or you're bowing down to the right person. But you're not getting the full benefit. You know? And, it, and it, it borders on what we call niyamagraha. Have you ever heard of this term? 
there's a, a book called The Nectar of Instruction. And the second verse describes six things that impede our devotion or even destroy it. And those six expand into eight because two of them have two meanings. The first one is atyahara. Atyahara means not eating. Ahara means to eat. Atyahara means too much eating. Ati is a, is a prefix that means more, too much. But it also means overcollecting. That's also a kind of consumption. Uh, Piyasa's cha means a strong endeavor for material things. This is, you know, we should avoid. Uh, Prajalpa, nonsense talk. And Niyamagraha, this has two meanings. One is Niyama, you know, the Sanskrit, you have this, this thing called Sandhi. Have you ever heard that? Where the two words meet. We, you, we deal with it all the time. Like uh, the verse we just uh, chanted. The one that you couldn't pronounce. Put <laughs> upakara artam. So what did we get here? It started out prati upakara artam. You see, it's broken up in the, in the synonyms. So that I at the end of prati became a Y because the next word begins with a vowel. That's the rule. And the, the short A at the end of upakara merged with the short A at the beginning of the next word, artam, to become a long A. This is called Sandhi. And the whole, the whole uh, there's a bunch of rules. And the whole idea is to smooth the, the, uh, the uh, chanting. The whole idea in Sanskrit is to make it uh, easier to chant rhythmically. And so that's, you know, prati, prati upakara, if you have two vowels in a row, then that makes it more difficult. Prati upakara aram, rather than prati upakara aram, you see? Upakara aram. So, niyama, niyama agraha, means one thing, niyama agraha means another. Because in, you have the, the short A uh, and, and a long A becomes a long A. But a short A and a long A also becomes a long A. So you have to under, get the interpretation of the, the broadened meaning. So what it means is niyama agraha. Niyama agraha means not to follow the niyama. Niyamas are the rules and regulations. You know, if you're, if you're slacking off on that, that's obviously going to impede your devotional service. But the other one, Niyama Agraha, means to follow the rules and regulations, but only externally, not really putting your heart in it. Not doing so with the intention of advancing in devotional service. Just sort of being there, you know, and, you know, and not actually paying it, uh, understanding the deep meaning of what you're doing. So th both of those have to be uh, avoided. So that's what uh, that we just read. In the mode of ignorance, if you, don't, you have no attention and you just do it indifferently, you know, even if it's the right recipient, it's still not very good. Okay, so now the rest of the chapter is kind of, is always going to be a little bit of a mystery to me, but <laughs> deals with om tat sat and, and the insignificance of those three words. Next verse, 23. Om tat sat ti nir desho Brahmanas trivadhas mataha Brahmanas te nabhedascha Yajyascha vihita pura. From the beginning of creation, the three words Om Tat Sat were used to indicate the supreme absolute truth. These three symbolic representations were used by Brahmins while chanting the hymns of the Vedas and during the sacrifices for the satisfaction of the supreme. Purport. It has been explained that penance, sacrifice, charity, and foods are divided into three uh, categories, the modes of goodness, passion, and ignorance. But whether first class, second class, or third class, they are all conditioned, contaminated by the material modes of nature. When they are aimed at the supreme, Om Tat Sat, the supreme personality of Godhead, the eternal, they become means for spiritual elevation. In the scriptural injunctions, such an objective is indicated. These three words, Om Tat Sat, particularly indicate the absolute truth, the supreme personality of Godhead, in the Vedic hymns, the word Om is always found. One who acts without following the regulations of the scriptures will not attain the absolute truth. So we're back to that same instruction, remember from the end of the previous chapter. That's the theme in this chapter. He will get some temporary result, but not the ultimate end of life. The conclusion is that the performance of charity, sacrifice, and penance must be done in the mode of goodness. Performed in the mode of passion or ignorance, they are certainly in inferior in quality. The three words, Om Tat Sat, are uttered in conjunction with the holy name of the Supreme Lord. For example, Om Tat Vishnu. Whenever a Vedic hymn or the holy name of the Supreme Lord is uttered, Om is added. This is the indication of Vedic literature. 
These three words are taken from Vedic hymns. Om ityetad brahmano nedishtam nama indicates the first call. Then tattvamasi chandogya upanishad 687 indicates the second goal. And sadeva saumya chandogya upanishad 621 indicates the third goal. Combined, they become Om Tat Sat. Formerly, when Brahma, the first created living entity, performed sacrifices, he indicated by these three words the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the same principle has always been followed by disciplic succession. So this hymn has great significance. Bhagavad Gita recommends, therefore, that any work done should be done for Om Tat Sat, or for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When one performs penance, charity, and sacrifice with these three words, he is acting in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is a scientific execution of transcendental activities which enables one to return home back to Godhead. There is no loss of energy in acting in such a transcendental way. Now, it's all very fascinating, and uh, I'm not disputing it, obviously, but uh, you don't hear it so much, Om Tat Sat. You know, pretty much Hare Krishna covers everything. And Prabhupada even said at one point, Om is contained within Hare Krishna mantra because when he came, Om was famous, even more famous than Hare Krishna back in the 60s, you know. So he would uh, answer many questions, and, you know, when people would say, what about Om? And Om is there in Hare Krishna, you know. In fact, there's a, there's a um, Om is a combination of three letters, A, U, and M. When the A and the U combine, they form the O. So you have A, U, and M, and Jiva Goswami has revealed that the A is Krishna, the U is Radha, and the M is the living entity. So there you go. Om, non different from Hare Krishna. <laughs> Om Tat Sat. Okay, I don't know quite uh, what, what to comment on that, uh, but the main, I think the main point here is that whatever we do in terms of charity or penance or austerity, sacrifice, uh, should be directed toward Krishna under the guidance of the Guru and the Shastra, and will be on safe ground. Tasmar om mitya da ritya. I think the, the problem is, do you know that the R with a dot under it is a vowel? Ri, ri. So it's, it's uda ritya. No, it, 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 again you have the Sunday, see that was iti, became like, why? It you da ritya. That's it. Yagyadan at the pakriya. Okay, just uh, that when, when you have a long A and, and, and the ending is the H with a dot under it, a bhagraha, then it's, it's kriyaha. Otherwise, there's no difference between kriyaha and kriyaha. If there was a short A, it would be kriyaha. But it's a long A, kriyaha. Let's see. So, yagyadan at the pakriyaha. Go ahead, try it. Yagya. Good. Pravartanti vidhanokta. Satatam brahmavadinam. Okay, one other little note here. Uh, it's good to study the Sanskrit pronunciation guide. There's certain ca uh, um, uh, categories of letters. And you have the uh, what's called the labials, which are just sounded with the lips. Pa, pa, you know, the pH, which is a um, aspirate. You have the air sound in it. So pa, pa, like in palum. You know, it's not palum, it's palum. So you have pa, pa, ba, ba, and ma. There's five of them. Those are the labials. Now, notice the, the last uh, four, uh, two, two words. It's satatam brahmavadinam. So you have the M with a dot over it, the uh, anusvar. And that indicates... Normally, when the next word begins with a, a, a consonant, it's supposed to sound like the N in bone, the N in bone in French bone. What if you don't speak French? But satatang, satatang, like that. But because B is a labial, the M is, is, is sounds exactly like an M. You know, they don't change it at all. Satatam from Avadinam. You just need to learn those labials. Um, it came up again in the in the previous. It comes up all the time. Anyway, watch watch for it. 
uh, when you see that the next word is beginning with a with a labial, then just you know go. Just it sounds just like an M. Okay. Therefore, transcendentalists undertaking performances of sacrifice, charity, and penance in accordance with scriptural regulations begin always with Om to attain the supreme. So you'll hear when we do a fire sacrifice, there's a lot of Oms. Sometimes some Om Tat Sat, you know. Now this is the famous verse that all the Pajaris know. This part of a longer verse at the beginning of the purport. Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam Sadapa Shanti Suyo De Viva Chakshadatam. I used to do some puja, you know. I would chant that before I get on the altar. The lotus feet of Vishnu are the supreme devotional platform. Now it's important, this is from the Rig Veda. Uh, the performance of everything on behalf of the Supreme Personality of God it assures the perfection of all activity. Okay, so that's pretty clear. 25. Tud. So first you talk about Om, and now it's a Tud, you see? And then Sat. The next, the next word, uh, 26 begins with Sat, Om Tat Sat. Tadit Yanabisandhaya Tadit Palang Yang Gita Pakriya Dana Kriyas to Vividha Kriyante Moksha Kang Shibihi Without desiring food of results, one should perform various kinds of sacrifice, penance and charity with the word tat. That's at the beginning of the of the verse. The purpose of such transcendental activities is to get free from material entanglement. Purport to be elevated to the spiritual position. One should not act for any material gain. Acts should be performed for the ultimate gain of being transferred to the spiritual kingdom, back home, back to Godhead. And then, sat. Sat bhave sadu bhave cha. Sat Yagge tapasidhani cha. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Prashaste karma nitata. Satchabda parta yujjate. Yagge tapasidhani cha. Stiti sadati chochyate. Karma chayva tadartiyam. Sadityay vabhidhiyate. Boy, we got a lot of sats in there. You got three, li three. You get the first line, the second line, and the third line. All tain this. Every line has the word sat. The absolute truth is the objective of devotional sacrifice, and it is indicated by the word sat. The performer of such sacrifice is also called sat as are all works of sacrifice, penance, and charity, which, true to the absolute nature, are performed to please the Supreme Person. O Son of Pita. Purport. The words prashaste karmani, or prescribed duties, indicate that there are many activities prescribed in the Vedic literature which are purificatory processes, beginning from the time of conception up to the end of one's life. Such purificatory processes are adopted for the ultimate liberation of the living entity. In all such activities, it is recommended that one vibrate Ong Tat Sat. The words Sad Bhave and Sadu Bhave indicate the transcendental situation. Acting in Krishna consciousness is called Sattva, and one who is fully conscious of the activities of Krishna consciousness is called a Sadhu. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 3.25.25, it is said that the transcendental subject matter becomes clear in the association of devotees. I was, I think, referring to this, Sadhu Sangashtaka, Satam Prasangan. That's the verse he's referring to. The words used are satam prasanga. Without good association, one cannot achieve transcendental knowledge. When initiating a person or offering a, the sacred thread, one vibrates the words om tat sat. Similarly, in all kinds of performance of yajna, the ob object is the supreme, om tat sat. The words tad artiyam further means offering sacrifice to anything which represent Huh, means offering sacrifice to anything which represents the Supreme. That's a mistake right there. Including such service as cooking and helping in the Lord's temple, or any other kind of work for broadcasting the glories of the Lord. These Supreme words, Om Tat Sat, are thus used in many ways to perfect all activities and make everything complete. So, the point is, is that all of this instruction is kind of subsumed when you're you know, being Krishna conscious, following the principles. 
chanting the holy name, you know, is certainly as good as Om Tat Sat and performs the same purpose. The main idea is to keep the mind fixed on Krishna and all and and, sac- and sanctify all your activities with the proper mood of devotion. Ashaddaya hutam dattam tapas taptam kutam chayat asadit yuchate parta nachatat preach no hiha Okay, pretty sobering instruction at the end here. Anything done as sacrifice, charity, or penance without faith in the Supreme O Son of Prita is impermanent. It is called asat and is useless both in this life and the next. Purport. Anything done without a transcendental objective, whether it be sacrifice, charity, or penance, is useless. Therefore, in this verse, it is declared that such activities are abominable. Everything should be done for the Supreme in Krishna Consciousness. Without such faith and without the proper guidance, now back to faith, this is the divisions of faith, without such faith and without the proper guidance, there can never be any fruit. In all the Vedic scriptures, faith in the Supreme is advised. In the pursuit of all Vedic instructions, the ultimate goal is the understanding of Krishna. No one can obtain success without following this principle. Therefore, the best course is to work from the very beginning in Krishna consciousness under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. That is the way to make everything successful. In the conditional state, people are attracted to worshipping demigods, ghosts, or yakshas like Kuvera. The mode of goodness is better than the modes of passion and ignorance, but one who takes directly to Krishna consciousness is transcendental to all three modes of material nature. Although there is a process of gradual elevation, if one, by the association of pure devotees, takes directly to Krishna consciousness, that is the best way. And that is recommended in this chapter. To achieve success in this way, one must first find the proper spiritual master and receive training under his direction. Then one can achieve faith in the Supreme. When that faith matures, in course of time it is called love of God. This love is the ultimate goal of the living entities. One should therefore take to Krishna consciousness directly. That is the message of this 17th chapter. Thus end the Bhagavad purports to the 17th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of the divisions of faith. So the main lesson you get from this, that I get, get from this chapter, is that whatever, uh, whether it's your faith or your activities, uh, the music you listen to, the person you hang out with, the food you eat, uh, it's all in the terms of the modes of nature. If, if they're not being done under the direction of Shastra and Guru in such a way that's assured for your elevation and purification, then they'll be, they'll be according to your conditioning. If you're in the mode, modes of passion, you'll be attracted to everything in the mode of passion. The foods, the, you know, the mentality, the uh, sacrifice, charity, all of these things. So understanding how the modes work, we want to aim for elevating ourselves to a higher and higher mode and to the mode of pure goodness. And then naturally, when it comes to charity, austerity, it'll all be done in a transcendental mode. Austerity comes, there's a festival coming. Oh, you have to work more hours, you can this and that, you know, whatever. But it's all transcendental, you know. It's like it says, Brahmapadam, Brahmahave, Brahmagno, Brahmanahatam. The offering is, is spiritual, the end result is spiritual because it's, you're properly situated in the instructions and your faith is there. So, so it's uh, <coughs> back to the first verse, Shastra Vidim Utsrija, you know, which takes us back to the second to last verse of the previous chapter. Yak Shastra Vidim Utsrija, Vartate Kamakarataha, Nasa Siddhim Avapnoti. If one gives up the Shastra Vidhi, the instructions of Shastra, then, then what do you, what's, what's going to be your impetus for work? Your own brain. You know, kama karata. You're going to work on your uh, impetus of your material desire. Then what's the result? Well, you won't get perfection. You won't get happiness. And you certainly won't go to the supreme goal. So if you want any of those things, then you have to follow the last verse of the chapter which is tasmat, vamin, uh, tasmat sh- sh- shastra pramanam te karya karya vivastato, to consult the shastra, the revealed scripture, given by a pure devotee, for what to do and what not to do. And having understood what the shastra says, one actually has to do and not do things as a matter of duty. And that will keep us uh, on the mode of goodness and the mode of pure goodness. Otherwise, we'll follow Arjun's you know, question. One who gives up the shastra vidi, uh, then what, uh, what's the situation of those who do not follow the principles of Scripture but worship according to their imagination? 
Are they in goodness, passion, ignorance? And then he's often running and describing everything in the different modes. And, you know, as we learn in the 14th chapter, the different modes will produce different results, you know. You know, if you're always in the mode of ignorance, then your future is very dark. You probably won't have a human life in the next birth. And even in this life, you'll be more or less living like an animal, especially in this age, you know. So uh, we have to be very careful what modes we cultivate. Most people don't, aren't aware, you know. Their, their knowledge is covered by the very modes that they're in, you know, and the, and, and the material desires that are under those particular modes. And so unless they have an intervention, they, they're stuck in the bubble of ignorance. You know. That's why we, we say all the time, Om Ajnata Marandasya Gyanandana Shalakya. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, blinded really, Timurandasya. But my spiritual master pried open my eyes you know, with the surgical instrument and applied the salve of knowledge. And so now we have a chance to do the right thing. That's really how it works. Because, as, you know, as you can see, everyone has their own philosophy and their own thing and they're, they're preaching and, you know, bewildering. It's just a big uh, confusion out there of, of, of these two main things. What is the goal of human life and how to achieve it? People have no idea, you know. So, so we're ready to uh, embark on the next chapter. Let's get dip our toe in and then we'll continue next week. All right, the, the conclusion, the perfection of renunciation. Text one. Arjuna Vacha Sanyasasya Mahabhaho Tattamichami Veditum Tyagasya Trabashi Kesha Patak Kesha in the Shudana. Arjun said, O mighty armed one, I wish to understand the purpose of renunciation, tyaga, and of the renounced order of life, sannyas, O killer of the Keshi demon, master of the senses. Purport. Actually, the Bhagavad Gita is finished in 17 chapters. The 18th chapter is a supplementary summarization of the topics discussed before. In every chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna stresses that devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the ultimate goal of life. The same point is summarized in the 18th chapter as the most confidential path of knowledge. In the first six chapters, stress was given to devotional service, yogi nama pisarve sham. That's the last verse of the sixth chapter. Of all yogis or transcendentalists, one who always thinks of me within himself <coughs> is best. In the next six chapters, pure devotional service and its nature and activity were discussed. In the third six chapters, knowledge, renunciation, and uh, the activities of material nature and transcendental nature uh, and devotional service were described. It was concluded that all acts should be performed in conjunction with the Supreme Lord, represented by the words Om Tat Sat, which indicate Vishnu, the Supreme Person. The third part of the Bhagavad Gita has shown that devotional service and nothing else is the ultimate purpose of life. This has been established by citing past Acharyas and the Brahma Sutra, the Vedanta Sutra. Certain impersonalists consider themselves to have a monopoly on the knowledge of Vedanta Sutra. But actually the Vedanta Sutra is meant for understanding devotional service. For the Lord himself is the composer of the Vedanta Sutra and he is its knower. That is described in the 15th chapter. In every scripture, every Veda, devotional service is the objective. That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. As in the second chapter, a synopsis of the whole subject matter was described in the 18th chapter, also, the summary of all instructions is given. The purpose of life is indicated to be renunciation and attainment of the transcendental position above the three material modes of nature. Arjun wants to clarify the two distinct subject matters of the Bhagavad Gita, namely renunciation, tyaga, and the renounced order of life, sannyas. Thus he is asking the meaning of these two words. Two words used in this verse to address the Supreme Lord, Rishikesh and Keshi Nishudana, are significant. Rishikesh is Krishna, the master of all senses, who can always help us attain mental serenity. Arjuna requests him to summarize everything in such a way that he can remain equipoised. Yet he has some doubts, and doubts are always compared to demons. 
He therefore addresses Krishna as Keshi Nishudana. Keshi was a most formidable demon who was killed by the Lord. Now Arjuna is expecting Krishna to kill the demon of doubt. You remember what form that demon took, Keshi? You haven't really, have you read the Krishna book before? Horse, big horse. He was actually the last demon Krishna killed in Vrindavan. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're launching into the 18th chapter. Now, there'll be a, I think, a dis- description here. You know, renunci- renunciation. Now, Prabhupada often uses that word, renunciation, in conjunction with the word vairagya. Uh, after all, Krishna has these six opulences, right? And uh, there's a verse about it. There's always a verse. But this one was composed by Parashara Muni, uh, Vy- Vyasa's father. And it defines what Bhagavan means. The word Bhagavan has two parts, Bhaga and Van. Van means possessor. Bhaga means opulence. So Krishna possesses these six opulences in full. Aishwarya Yasya, Vir Yasya, Aishwarya Yasya, Samagrasya, Vir Yasya, Yasya Shakshriya, Jnana Bhairaga Yasya, Shannam Bhaga Hitingana. So Aishwarya Yasya refers to wealth. But also, as I, I always like to point out, controlling power. That's also an opulence. So, Aishwarasya uh, Samagrasya means in full, completely. And that, that applies to all of these opulences. Viryasa is strength. It can be strength of physical strength or any of the other, strength of the senses, whatever. All strength he has, unlimited. Yashishak, fame. Shriya, in this case it means beauty. Gyanam, knowledge. And Vairagya. Now, Vairagya is always said, you know, he has these six opulences of beauty, strength, wealth, fame, knowledge, and renunciation. But renunciation here is tyaga. So it's important to realize the distinction between this tyaga and Vairagya. In our, in our uh, practice and philosophy, Vairagya really is more uh, prominent. Uh, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he uh, composed um, several very important verses about Lord Chaitanya when he was converted into his followers. And one of them is a famous verse, Vairagya Vidya Nita Bhakti Yoga Shiksha Tamega Purushak Purana. He's saying this Lord Chaitanya is the very same ancient person, Krishna, come to teach devotional service to himself, characterized by these two things, Vairagya and Vidya. means uh, detachment and knowledge. You know, it's translated as renunciation. But here's this word, Tyaga, is renunciation. See? Tyaga literally means to give up. We renounce meat. No meat. You can't, you can't dovetail it. You know? And illicit sex, gambling, toxic. We know that. That's literally taga. But vairagya uh, is, is more important because it means even in the presence of allurements for sense gratification, there's no desire. Vai- raga literally means passion or desire for something. Vairagya means none. And so we're, we're after that state. In other words, when the Material desire has been, and it's, watch it now, here's the word, sublimated. <laughs> That's it, it's purified, sublimated, into spiritual desire, desire to serve Krishna. That's what we're looking for. And that's what this process gives. Mere tyaga cannot stand. This is, this is you know, I can't stand it. You know, I'm surrounded by all these uh, allurements. Let me go off to the Himalayas. But we're not into that. It's not necessary. Krishna kind is so powerful that if you chant Hare Krishna, you'll be attracted to Krishna and everything related to Krishna, and those material desires will be transmuted into spiritual desire, and we'll, we'll come to the stage of, uh, of uh, Yamuna Charya, who is, his famous verse is quoted twice in these purports. Yadavadi mamacheta krishna pada vinde nabanamanasadhama nyudhitam rantamasi. Don't be afraid to chant along. I know you know this one. Tadabhati Bhattanadi Sangame Smaryamani Bhavati Mukavikar. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You'll learn it. Bhavati Mukavikaru Sushta Nishtivanangsha. Nishtivana means to spit. So he's saying, Yadabhati, ever since he had been a great king, Yamunacharya. You know, kings have all facility for sense gratification. So ever since I've been tasting newer and newer pleasure at serving the Krishna's lotus feet. Yadabhami mama cheta krishna pada adabhande, that's the lotus feet. Nava nava rasa, nuva nuva rasa, taste. Dhamma nyudhitam rantama, enjoying, I've been enjoying this 
varieties of taste is serving Krishna's lotus feet. Then Tadabadi, ever since that's happened, Tadabadi, this is what my state is. Tadabadi, but the Nadi Sangame, in association with women. Smarya uh, men, remembering, Bhavati Mukhavakada Sushanishi, my lips curl in this taste and I spit. So literally, what he was passionate for, you know, has become disgusting. We have another example of Bilbo Mangal Thakur, very uh, dramatic. Have you heard that story before? Yeah. But he was also a womanizer, you know. He couldn't, uh, middle of the night, you know, and the storm is, is going on, you know, and he can't take his mind off. It. He can't patch a, a boat. No one will take him across in the boat. It's a big storm. How to get across, how to get across. Oh, there's a log. He jumps in and grabs the log, gets on the island. Oh, my God, it's not a log. It's a corpse. You know, very contaminating. He's a Brahmin, you know, it's very disgusting. I mean, no mind, no mind, I don't care, you know. Gotta find him, gotta chintamani. So she's locked up her gate and everything. You know, she's uh, he's not coming tonight, you know, she's in bed. But then she hears a thump. You know, he's gotten across the river and he comes to the to the wall. How's he gonna get in? There's a rope, and he pulls it up, it's not a rope, it's a snake, you know, somehow he doesn't get bitten. But he falls down, he's injured, you know. So she what is that? So she looks open the door and it's pouring rain and there's Bilbo Mongo lying at the bottom of the wall. So somehow she drags him and gets him inside, helps him get inside. He says, are you nuts? You know, <laughs> I didn't think you were coming tonight. What's the matter with you? You know, if you had had as much attraction for Krishna as you did for this stool-ridden body, You'd be a great sadhu. That's all he needed to hear, you know. <laughs> so you're right. Chitamani, thank you. Off to the bases, leaves. Or maybe took rest in the corner, it's still pouring. And it changed everything, you know. So he's, uh, you know, also uh, a great example of someone who transmuted this desire into the pure devotion. He recalled what happened, in, what he had in his previous life. So that's the, the real perfection of renunciation, is to attain vairagya, where the, the, even the desire for the things is in there. We, we, Tiaga literally means, I want it, I want it, but no, take it away from me. You know, I'm giving it up. You know, I'm, I'm going to the Himalayas. I won't even be around it anymore. But that doesn't really work because the desire is still there. What is that famous verse? Vishyab and Nivartan De Nidahara Sade Hinak. 2 59. Check it out. Let's see if I got the right number. Yep. Although the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, either voluntarily, you know, or by force, the taste for sense objects remains. But ceasing such engagement by experiencing a higher taste, he's fixing consciousness. So what we're after is that higher taste. And then even us, you know, pathetic Kali Yugites, who have had all kinds of sense gratification, you know, but still, the power of Krishna kind is so strong in the Hare Krishna mantra that even you can be purified. Just like, and, and embrace that wonderful verse by Madhavendra Pur, recorded by Lord Chaitanya in the beginning of his teachings to Sanatan concerning the practice of devotional service. And that is Kama Dina, Katina Katita, Palita Duni Deshas. Tesham Jata, Maina Karuna, Natrapa, No Prashanti, Utri Jaitan, Hadi Yotapate, Sampatam, Nabda Buddhis, Twama Yatak, Shadanamamayam. In how many ways have I sought to obey the seductive demands of my wicked desires? I, they've shown me no mercy, yet on I've gone shamelessly trying to quench lust's unquenchable fires. But now I'm rejecting these hellish desires, for my higher intelligence now has awoken. O Krishna, O shelter of fearlessness, please let me serve you with faith that will never be broken. So it's a perfect example. In other words, coming to the conclusion, the understanding with our intelligence, that these, you know, that the, the endeavor for sensory gratification is self-defeating. Uh, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to obey those demands anymore. But the fact is, unless you're you're going to be obeying someone else's demands, Krishna's, that those demands will be very insistent, and eventually you go that way. There has to be engagement for the senses, the mind, intelligence, everything in Krishna consciousness to really purify. So that's the meaning of this. My intelligence is working now. I'm approaching you, Krishna. Please engage me in your service rather than the service of lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness. So that's what that's the real perfection of renunciation, which will be described in this chapter. All right, we have a few minutes. I'll give you a couple of more poems. And then, uh, so we did text one, didn't we? We did text one. Okay, so we'll start in text two on uh, Monday. I'm sorry? Yeah. 
Modarashtakam. Okay. Thank you for that request. <laughs> all right. We have just enough time. Uh, we may not have time for all the Sanskrit, but we'll try. Modaram Modarebio, P. Mangalebio, P. Mangalam, Pavanam, Pavanibio, P. Hadinam, I have a You know it? You know, he's familiar with it a little bit. Oh, oh, that's cable to come. Oh, oh, the, the one, uh, yeah. Well, the one I did, of course, is your lips are sweet, your smile is sweet, your lotus. <laughs> you know, I must confess, I don't know it all by heart, but I know some. Your, your lotus feet and hands are sweet, your waist and lotus navel sweet, your threefold bending pose is sweet, O oh, king of sweet, your sweet complete. Your lips are sweet, your smile is sweet, your lotus eyes and face are sweet. Your heart is sweet, your name is sweet. O oh, king of sweet, your sweet complete. <laughs> Ah, uh, your jeweled ornaments are sweet, your threefold bending pose is sweet, your bluish black complexion sweet, O oh king of sweet, your sweet complete. I must confess, I don't know more. <laughs> well, I'll give you one more. We have time for one more. Just a bit. Bujanga da pachanda kas, buddha da kanda chudankure, nirankha shadra ganchada, brahmana buddha bringam brahme. Patanga do hitus to tea, one could tea the kari, pia, padas puddle to me, mahus. Try mokunda should harati. You wear the best of crests, a crown of perfect peacock plumes. Your dancing glances stun the bees meandering with the blooms. You relish love play in the cottage by Kalindi shore. O Krishna, may pure love for you be mine forevermore. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Prabhupada.